Hi, I'm Craig Kilby, field agronomist for Bex Hybrids in Western Illinois. But today, I'm here at Downs, Illinois, at our PFR site for Practical Farm Research, just to the east of Bloomington, to talk about a particular topic in a situation that we see here today. We discovered this actually yesterday on Monday, today being May the 9th, but we're out here looking at some issues we have with injury that has ha occurred with the use of pre-emerge herbicide over top of soybeans. Behind me and in this plot and in this whole block, we planted soybeans on April 19th and 20th, okay? And one to two days after that, I think believe it on April 21st, a herbicide application was applied over the top, pre-emerge, okay? That herbicide contained a PPO or group 14 herbicide. One that we recommend and, and certainly endorse uh, the use of those residual herbicides in nearly every different uh, herbicide uh, platform that we sell at Bex. And so they are effective and do an excellent job. However, there are some situations that can occur with injury on soybeans when weather and certain things occur and fall into place. Unfortunately, this year it occurred right here at Downs, Illinois, and we probably think that it's going to happen over a wider area of our trade area within Illinois, Indiana, possibly Ohio and Iowa and Missouri. But the primary thing that we normally find is that we have soybeans that are planted either right ahead or near uh, a high rainfall and low temperature event. Well, guess what? We had it this time. So following our April 19th and 20th planting dates and our herbicide application, we did end up with some extremely heavy rain events over the last two weeks. And we've had an extended period of time with below normal temperatures. What that is doing is preventing the soybean plant from metabolizing the herbicide, okay? So we have uh, a herbicide that soybean plants are relatively good at taking the compounds that are created on the leaf surface, which kill weeds, but are able to be broken down rapidly within a soybean plant to alleviate and prevent injury. So that is a selective herbicide. Let's look at the individual plants that we have out here real quick and see what type of injury we're seeing. We're looking at a starter fertilizer trial study that is here at Downs, Illinois, where we are seeing some of the soybeans that have emerged earlier over to the left, uh, which look a little bit better in quality, but some of the others here that were a bit slower in their emergence and probably had less ability to metabolize, again, our herbicide, are showing some signs on the hypocotyl and just a little bit of slight injury on the cotyledons of uh, interaction with our herbicide. Hey, one of the other questions we oftentimes get when we see injury from PPO or herbicides and in this combination, especially in these type of weather events, which we talked about earlier, what is the effect of seed treatments on the soybean plant as it encounters and tries to metabolize the herbicide issues that we discussed here on PPO injury. Well, we're right here in the middle between two different treatments. Over on this side, we do have a Levo treatment, same variety of soybeans with just our straight Escalate C treatment without a Levo. And let's take a look. You can see that we've got discoloration of plants. And in fact, we've probably got one here or two that might actually die completely in this non olivo treatment over here from the PPO injury. And again, on this side, we see similar results, but we do have some more discoloration occurring on the olivo side, which we would normally expect. Olivo does often provide a, a necrosis just around the edges of the cotyledons themselves as they come through that seed treatment and expands out, uh, out of the seed coat. Okay, so we've looked at a couple of different situations. We've kind of looked at some of the symptoms and what are the primary causes that we often find when we see herbicide injury with residual herbicides. And we know that that's primarily weather related. We also can see that visually there's a quite a difference between an Olivo treatment in that combination versus a non-Olivo treatment. 
but there is really no interaction between the two. So the C treatment does not make the PPO injury worse, nor does the PPO injury make the levo worse. But we do know that there is visual symptoms whenever discoloration is found on a plant, it just is easy to see the difference visually when there really isn't any extra significant stress imposed by the Olivo. I think today being the May 9th that we still have got a few more days of warmer weather. Temperatures are warming up here today. Sun is finally shining. But it's going to be a couple of three days before, regardless of what the situation might be in your farm, whether it's herbicide injury, damage, or that might be thinning a stand, or it's just wet conditions, but to make replant decisions is actually probably on the minds of many. And so we're probably a couple, three days away from really making a logical uh, assessment of what we have in a stand. We've got to see what we actually get up in this population, both in corn and in soybeans. So we're probably looking at, at this point in many areas, looking at probably middle to later this week, probably the May 12th through 14th in that range, before we can make some real good, solid, management decisions on replant. With that, I'm Craig Kilby.